Hey friend, Chris Vandeviver here from whylogicprorules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Rare occasion, I'm coming out from behind the camera, behind the screencast. I wanted to answer one specific question for a long time. You know, I wanna know as a Logic user, what are the best tools to use with Logic? Best audio interface, best MIDI keyboard, whatever the case may be, I wanted to know the answer to these questions. And it started with, what's the best audio interface for Logic Pro 10. There are many options out there. There are so many audio interfaces to choose from. I'm not made of money. I don't got tons of time. So I wanted to hone in on the audio interfaces that I thought were what people gravitate towards the most. As a Logic user, it's easy to feel a little like you're on an island unto yourself. Avid has their line of audio devices that work really well with Pro Tools. Personas has started developing their audio interfaces and control surfaces that work great with Studio One. Apple's bread and butter is not Logic Pro 10, right? It's watches, iPads, computers, whatever the case may be. But Logic is awesome. So what devices work best with Logic? And I set out to answer this question specifically with audio interfaces. One particular audio interface that I thought was just above and beyond everything else as a Logic user, and that is the Apogee Element 24. Now, I compared this against several audio interfaces, my Personas Quantum, a Focusrite Scarlett, and a Universal Audio Twin X, the Apollo series, or Twin X, which is their most current version of the Twin. And I chose the Element above all. Now, that's not a snub to anybody else. It's not a snub to those other companies and devices. And I should preface this whole thing with, if you have an audio interface that you love, don't let this video convince you otherwise. That is not the goal of this video. If you have an Apollo, amazing. If you have a Focusrite device, perfect. But if you're the type of Logic Pro user that is looking for audio devices that just tightly integrate with Logic so that there's no hiccups, you can just get right down to creating, you might wanna consider some of the Apogee interfaces. So let me take you through the trajectory of all these different interfaces that I tried out. I own a Personas Quantum here. I've loved it for the year to two years that I've owned it. I've used it quite a bit. I was never feeling like I needed to go get something else. If you're looking for an audio interface that has a ton of IO, so inputs and outputs, and you're looking for absolutely minimal latency, this thing is amazing. But I wanted to answer the question of what the best audio interface for Logic users is. So I first started with the Focusrite Scarlett, the generation three, the most current model. Now I, picked out the Solo, which might not fit all users, but I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. It was very simple, I could just throw it in my bag, just take it wherever, plug in a microphone, plug in a guitar input, and it just worked flawlessly. Like the moment you plug in the audio interface, Focusrite has this app that pops up on your Mac, tells you how to get started, where to download stuff. You, there's no guesswork involved, right? You just plug it in and you just roll from there. And I was very pleased with how simple it was. The software mixer is basically non-existent. You can turn on the air feature for the preamp, which is uh, Focusrite's uh, proprietary modeling of one of their famous preamps. And that's about it. You know, you could just plug it in, it's bus powered. Very simple, very easy. If you identify as a beginner or someone who doesn't know a lot about audio recording, the Focusrite Scarlet series, I think is hands down your best option. For sure, so let's move on. Then I tried out the Universal Audio Twin X. Now this thing is fantastic. It's a desktop interface. The A to D conversion and D to A conversion is some of the best in its class, if not the best in its class. And if you know anything about Universal Audio, they're well known for their amazing plugin emulations of different hardware, of different effects, and I'm not gonna lie to you, the Universal Audio stuff is amazing. The plugins are fantastic. Are they worth the money? That's a debate. But if you take the chance to try out those plugins and that interface, I think you would agree with me that the plugins are like second to none. They're fantastic. The D to A conversion is what I'm most interested in at this juncture with where I'm at in my production. So A to D is analog to digital. So we're talking about plugging in a microphone into the interface and that's being recorded into your computer, transferred into ones and zeros. People get pretty boned up about preamps, and I'm not here to argue that, but for my needs, I kind of imagine the preamp from a Personas interface to a universal audio interface to the Apogee interface, et cetera. It's kind of like different strokes for different folks. If somebody wants to own an API 
a Neve, an SSL, which studios do, they want it for different colors for different applications. And that's about the way I feel. I'm not that into preamps. So yeah, I like the Apogee preamps. I like the Universal Audio preamps. I even like the PreSonus preamps. That's fine. What I'm most interested in is the D to A, which is getting from out of your computer through your speakers to the audio that you're listening to. And that to me is very important. You know, I did not expect there to be a difference between the universal audio model, and I'll talk about the Apogee model as well, from my Personas model. Now, the differences are not stark. They're not just like mind-blowing. Wow, things are so much clearer now. But it was enough. You know, I hooked it up to my monitor station, and I A-B'd. I level match. I played Bruno Mars and Florence and the Machine, all these tracks to compare the different devices back to back. Now the Persona is back to back with the universal audio interface and then I return the universal audio interface to test out the Apogee interface. So I didn't have both the Apogee and the UA device side by side. But, you know, level matching, comparing back and forth, I noticed that both the UA and Apogee devices, there was a little more of a linear spread from left to right. I felt that my Persona's interface, I love it, a tiny bit congested in the low mids, and there seemed to be kind of a roll off in the top end. So, you know, we can debate that all day long. That's what I thought I noticed. That's what I felt. In this case, with the universal audio interface, I was very pleased. I was very pleased with the plugins. Now, the reason that I did not choose the universal audio interface, I am not keen on the UA business model. Now, that's not a snub. Again, they're an amazing company that's making great devices. Just personally for me, like I've spent so much money on plugins. I've invested so much in software. I don't want to invest anymore. And I feel that the UA model, whether or not you agree it is a good model, their plugins necessitate the hardware. So if I want to use their Neve emulations, their SSL emulations, I have to run those plugins with their audio interface or one of their like satellite cards. You can't get around that. So that to me is kind of like, mm, I don't want to be locked in to a situation where I have to use this interface forevermore. I have to use UA hardware forevermore. That's just not something I'm interested in at this point in time. Now, the other thing I didn't really care for with the UA interface, and again, it's not a snub, it's just my personal preferences. I don't love the console. I don't love having to bounce between the console and Logic Pro 10 and you know constantly having to manage two different windows when I'm trying to record. It's just not for me. Now the console is UA's own software mixer where you instantiate their plugins so you can monitor through their plugins. That's their big claim to fame. You can act like you're in an analog recording studio using these highly coveted emulations but without any latency. So you can leave Logic's buffer size at its biggest, 1024, but be able to use these amazing plugins as if there was no latency at all. Hey, I'm not arguing with that. What I'm arguing with though is just that it's a lot more to manage and UA seems to really insist on using the console while you're recording. And it just feels like too much juggling that I have to deal with. That's my feeling. I also feel that UA, their marketing and branding is amazing, which is almost a detriment. And I say it's a detriment to those of us who are beginners, who identify as new users to audio production. You graduated from GarageBand to Logic. You just don't feel comfortable in this environment. UA has sold us that they are the best. And so I feel like I'm running into a lot of beginners who are buying the twin or UA devices, and they're just totally lost in that whole system of trying to manage the console against Logic Pro 10. The UA device, amazing. The plugin's amazing. But if you're a beginner, I don't recommend it for you. I say check out the Focusrite device and then kind of graduate from there. So where does that leave us with the Apogee 24? Now, I did not expect to like the Apogee. I'm gonna be very upfront. I kind of walked into it, same thing with the UA device. I was kind of like, are these devices worth the price point, really? With the UA device, I feel, you know, it's still a tiny bit debatable, but yeah, it's, it's an amazing device, amazing emulations, et cetera. With the Apogee device, it doesn't really inspire me at all when I take a look at it. You look at it, it's a very simple interface. It's got two inputs. It's just got a stereo output, headphone, it's very bare bones. And it's quite an expensive device for two channels compared to other devices out there. But once I started digging into it, I kind of felt, I really love this thing. I really love the experience. Now, number one, again, the D to A was very important to me. So from the sound getting out of my computer through my monitors, I noticed the difference. 
And I gotta say, I prefer the Apogee device over my Personas in that department. As you can see, I'm in a space where I'm constantly working at tuning the space with acoustic treatment, sonar works, and it becomes a game of inches, you know? And the inches that the Apogee Element provided me, I felt it was worth the price tag. After that, I love the integration of the Apogee device with Mac Systems and Logic specifically. Now, I have a couple other videos that walk you through those integrations because I felt if you were interested in this device or if you're looking to upgrade, you're gonna need to see that. Basically, you can control everything related to the element from within Logic Pro 10. So the preamp volume, there are no knobs, right? There's no phantom power button, nothing. All of that is controllable from the audio device controls in Logic. So you know that section at the top of the mixer of your channel strips where you're like, what are those even for? It's to control compatible audio devices. Now Apogee, I think is the only company, I think RME has one audio interface, but Apogee takes full advantage of this. So you can actually turn up your preamp on your element from within Logic. You can turn on phantom power from within Logic. What's even better is you can set direct monitoring. So say you have a project that has a million tracks, tons of routing, tons of plugins, and you need to record that last shaker track. But what are you gonna do? You can't set the buffer size back down to like 128 because you're gonna have system overloads left, right, and center. Well, on a channel by channel basis, you can actually turn on direct monitoring. So that will set one of the two inputs on the Apogee to direct monitoring. You just leave software monitoring on in Logic and it's the latency disappears. You can leave the buffer size at 1024. It's amazing. You can also set up if you have a microphone on your Mac as a talkback mic through the Apogee control software and I'll show you in those subsequent videos. And lastly, something that I didn't anticipate actually caring about because again, I'm not interested in investing in new plugins and I haven't yet, but Apogee has started to dip their toes into that same realm as UA, having plugin emulations that you can instantiate in the mix software, in the Apogee control software, so you can have EQ, compression, all this stuff, and still have zero latency. One step better, you can use either native or in the Apogee control app. So you don't have to have the hardware to use those plugins. On top of that, you can also use the channel linking option. So once you have the Apogee control app set up the way that you want it, in terms of like using the volume buttons on your Mac keyboard for controlling the speaker output or headphone output, setting up your talkback mic source, whatever the case may be. Once you're set, you don't ever have to open the Apogee Control app ever again. Instead, you can just open one of the plugins within Logic, and then at the bottom of the window, there's an option for channel linking. So you just go into Logic, you set up channel linking, you say analog one or analog two. Now the plugin is running off of the DSP, off the box, and you're processing latency free. It's amazing. So again, I'm not trying to talk you out of your current audio interface. If you have an audio interface that you love, that's amazing. Is this exhaustive research? No, absolutely not. I don't have the money, I don't have the time to try out every audio interface ever created. What I wanted to try out were the most likely candidates for Logic users, which I think is the Focusrite Scarlet series, the UA interfaces, the Apollos, and I think Apogee just because of that tight integration with Logic. So at the end of the day, I was actually intending to return this audio interface, but I actually bought it and I actually have a set of rack ears so I can put it right in the rack here. I'm not getting rid of my Quantum, but honestly, today is the first time I've turned this on in like a month or two. So that's all I'm saying. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, as always, I highly suggest subscribing to the YouTube channel, Why Logic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, whylogicprorules.com. Every week I'm posting new videos, new emails, new posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro 10. Thanks so much.